Hi guys, I uh, hope you've had a good couple of weeks since you last saw me. Hope you're all staying safe, doing well, following guidelines and all that. Um, so tonight the uh, talk that I've uh, been asked to talk about is worship with you guys. So if we just get straight into it, so the uh, looked up, the Google, the definition of worship on Google, Google's definition of it, is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. So obviously for us, we're going to be talking about God. He's more than just a, a deity. He is the God. Uh, but and as Christians, our most commonly seen act of worship is is sun worship, is corporate worship in a church or or by yourself, is is singing praises to God. Now this is uh, for us; it's a response to God for how great He is, how much He's given us. It's a way for us to to show back adoration, to show back reverence, show back love, to give the glory back to God. Worship is in in essence, it is giving the glory back to God. It's giving something back to the One. Who gifts us with so much and I've, I've just said that it's the most commonly form seen is sung worship but to to stop worship at that point would would miss out the whole the whole major part of worship the whole living our lives as an act of worship so recently we've been looking at the armor of god and what that means for us and clothing ourselves in his ways not our own forsaking our own ways and doing this is an act of worship as it, it gives the glory back to God, living in his ways lives glory back to God. But what does this mean for us? It means that we need to live our lives, our whole lives, as an act of worship to God. You may ask, how, how is this worship? How is just living our lives? How is that an act of worship? For me, one reason would be that it shows our love for God, living life his way, forsaking our own ways that we are used to, that we're comfortable in, but actually living life God's way. That, that may make it harder at times but it make it so much better and it really gives the glory back to God. Another reason for me comes from, if you look in the Bible, in Matthew 25, uh, Jesus is talking about how we treat people and how that then uh, reflects back on us. And he says, enter you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. And then these people responded to Jesus saying, Lord, we, we never saw you like this. We never, we, we could never feed you because we never saw you hungry. And Jesus just, just responds to them saying, I'm telling you the truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. So Jesus is saying to us that actually the main part of living life God's way is, is, is blessing others. And by blessing others, we're blessing God. By blessing the people that have been overlooked and ignored, we're blessing God. Now, I think part of this is, is God is... It's got so much fatherly and so much paternal love for people. I mean, if we break this down into a human example, if, if your own parents or, or parental figures in your life, they have so much love for you that when someone treats you well, when someone does something nice for you, it, it gives them joy. It, it gives them happiness. I mean, it may be a silly example, but it was my birthday a, a week ago and um, Lydia made me a cake. Now that seems a silly example, but my mum is known for her cakes. She makes brilliant cakes. And um, it happens for my brother Ben's birthday as well with his girlfriend. And that the act of our girlfriends doing something that was such a paternal thing for her to do gave, brought us such joy that we we had found people that would do these things for us, treat us with kindness, with respect, treat us with love and care and give us joy. And I think it's in the same way when God's saying when we when we feed the hungry, when we when we give a drink to the thirsty, when we give a room to the homeless, when we visit the sick and when we visit the imprisoned, that we're doing it to him, that he loves these people so much that it brings, a, it brings him such joy, such passion, such love for us and for them when we do these things, that by blessing them, we are blessing him. Now, for me, that is the essence of worship. You can have some worship. But for me, if you're not living your life in worship to God, if you're not living your life in accordance to God's ways, in this righteousness, in this salvation, peace, and joy, all the things that we've been looking at, 
you're missing the essence of worship. You may think that you're, you're worshipping God with all that you have and you may be singing with all you have and that is a brilliant thing. But if you're missing the whole point of it, the, whole, the fact that our whole life should be an act of worship to God, that our whole life should be blessing God, giving glory back, then you've missed the essence. So I just would encourage you guys over the next week, look at how with your life so you can bless others. I know it's a bit difficult at the moment with lockdown, but there's many things you could send cards to people that need encouraging. You could uh, give a phone call to someone you think's lonely. Just send a text to a friend, see how they're doing. Just simple things like that. They may seem like nothing, but actually living our lives in, an, in a righteous and an honouring way to God is worship. And it's such an amazing sense of worship. So I just encourage you guys to do that this week. I uh, hope you have fun doing it and uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks time.